All right, let's continue working with geometric vectors and practicing linear dependence and its effect on decomposition. And I will use these two exercises as opportunities to make a couple important points. So in the first one, the three vectors A, B, and C are meant to be all at 120 degree angle to each other and all equal length. And we're supposed to decompose the vector D as a linear combination of A, B, and C in all possible different ways. So I think that with these vectors, it's easier to see that they're linearly dependent by the second definition, because there is sum a plus b plus c equals zero. We can kind of see it by the tip to tail way if you combine them uh, by placing tips to tails, then they'll form that nice equilateral triangle, so they close in on themselves, so their sum is zero. Alternatively, you can see that maybe a is minus b plus c. Whichever way you see it, we have A plus B plus C equals zero. So this is our quote-unquote fancy zero right here. And that will be the key to discovering all possible linear combinations that give D. So one of the ways to obtain D is to say that it's B plus C. So here's one way of doing it. So D equals B plus C, that's one particular way of doing it. And then you can throw in any amount of this fancy zero, A plus B plus C, and there you go. This is all possible ways of expressing D as a linear combination of B and C, excuse me, of A, B, and C. And of course we can write it by combining uh, the vector. So we could write alpha a. I'm just saving the space on the board, so I'm not writing it, but I'll say it out loud. So alpha a plus 1 plus alpha b plus 1 plus alpha c. That would be a more standard way of writing linear combinations. So here's the point I'd like to make. You may also say, well, wait a minute, that's not all possible ways of doing it. We could also write it as, because after all, d equals minus a, so we can write it as minus a plus alpha a plus b plus c. Okay, so I, the point that I would like to make is, yes, on the one hand, you're right. This is another way of doing it. So the takeaway is that the totality of linear combinations can be expressed in different ways. This is one way, and this is another way. But it's important to realize that these two expressions represent, represent the same set of linear combinations. For example, by taking alpha equals, let's say, 1, we would get a plus 2b plus 2c. When alpha equals 1, this expression delivers a plus 2b plus 2c. And you will notice that if we take alpha equals 2 here, then we would also get a plus 2b plus 2c. Let me take alpha equals 10. We would get 10a plus 11b plus 11c. 10, 11, 11. Is that same combination in this mix? And the answer is yes. Just take 11. Alpha equals 11. Then we'll have 10a plus 11b plus 11c, the same linear combination. So this expression represents the same set of linear combinations as this expression. There's just more than one way of capturing all of those linear combinations as mathematical expressions. So I'm actually okay with this equal sign. What this equal sign is saying is not that this expression equals this expression, which is certainly not true. This expression does not equal this. There are different expressions. Even if you were to multiply it out and combine it, they were just different expressions. The expressions aren't equal, but the linear combinations that they represent are the same. That's, in my mind, the meaning of this equal sign. And of course, it also means that all of those linear combinations evaluate 2D. So once again, it's not so much the expression or a particular expression that's the answer. It's the set of linear combinations that it represents. You may want to revisit the video titled 
the equation of a straight line where we encountered the same thing, that the same straight line can be captured by different kinds of expressions. This is the same thing and actually later on we'll draw an exact parallel between this example and this situation and the equation of a straight line where the same set of points, in this case the same set of linear combinations can be captured by very different expressions. So that's the takeaway from this exercise in addition to practicing linear dependence and linear combinations and decomposition one more time. Let's move on to this example where um, I'll make a different point. In the second example we have to decompose the vector E as linear combinations of four vectors A, B, C, and D. And what makes this exercise different from the previous one is that the vectors A, B, C, and D are linearly dependent in two different ways. We immediately notice that B is 2A and of course D is twice C. So what's the implication of this? Well the implication of this is that there are now two fancy zeros to contend with. The first one is 2A minus B. That's a non-trivial linear combination that equals zero. The second one is 2C minus D, another non-trivial linear combination that equals zero, completely independent from the first one. So now when we're decomposing the vector E as a linear combination of A, B, C, and D, there are two different fancy zeros that can be thrown in in any proportion without affecting the end result while changing the coefficients of the linear combination. So when we're expressing E as a linear combination of A, B, C, and D, we have to do it in one particular way, which is B plus D. Of course, we could have also said 2A plus 2C, but then I would have made the same comment we did here. Yes, it's a different linear combination. Yes, it's a different expression, but eventually it will represent the same set of linear combinations. So B plus D plus, carrying it over to the next line, alpha 2A minus B and plus beta 2C minus D. We needed a new Greek letter, alpha and beta. Now there are two degrees of freedom in the linear combination. There are two degrees of freedom in the expression that captures all possible linear combinations. So the set of linear combinations that represent E is richer. Here we only had one degree of freedom. Here we have two degrees of freedom. The set is richer because there are just more relationships among A, B, C, and D. And more relationships means there are more ways to combine them in a way that would yield zero. And that means there are more ways to combine the four vectors A, B, C, and D in a way that would yield D. So the more relationships, the more degrees of freedom in the, in the eventual linear combinations. And the less uniqueness. So linear dependence means immediate loss of uniqueness, but when they're linearly dependent in more than one way, the more linear dependencies among the vectors, the less unique the more diversity there is in the final answer.